All right, I did a video on uh, me repairing this uh, ri this radio. It had a, uh, a ribbon cable that uh, connector had fallen off the PC board. And while I did do that repair, um, there was a second problem with the radio is that the squelch just never seemed to work on it. Um, even if I had gotten the squelch working, <laughs> these radios have a habit of draining the battery. So you have to remove the battery every night. I've, I've read that online. Somebody else had it. You had to remove the battery every, every single night. And it's one of these big nickel metal. This radio is just, has seen better days. It's just, it's just outdated. It's just not a radio you want, you want these days. I thought maybe I'd repurpose it for something else. Um, what I really wanted it for was to make the video on, uh, on just, just for something to fix. Um, it only cost me 20 bucks, right? It wasn't a big deal. So what I'm going to do today is get, get an extra $20 out of it, and that is to do a teardown of it. And so I've taken out the battery, and do not throw batteries away, uh, recycle them. Um, my uh, local f uh, firehouse uh, accepts batteries, so you can take bags of batteries to the firehouse and drop them off, and then they, uh, they send it to the recycler. You don't have to worry about batteries uh, shorting out and, and catching a fire in your home, too. Uh, so, so that's where it's going to go. All right, so having said my, my, my uh, civic service thing for the day, um, so this thing has, uh, so the battery, battery went back here, and uh, there's not much in here. This is where the, where the keyboard goes, okay? And so, the the real the radio is only a little small little portion up, a small little portion up here, and uh, this this comes off. This is the the little ribbon cable that I had to uh, I had to fix, and um, this is where the display is. This is a display driver and 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 a microprocessor for the radio, and then here are the key buttons and stuff here. We can take this out, uh, speaker. Uh, rubber keys, um, and uh, yeah, not much going on there. So let me change the camera here. All right, so here's the uh, here's the display board, nice little gold contacts. So the way the rubber keys work is that there's a little little bit of carbon there that uh, pushes down and, and makes electrical contact, and uh, not much else on this board. Um, I'm not exactly sure what all this circuitry does down here. It might just be the audio amplification for the uh, for the speaker. I'm not sure. It seems to be quite a quite a bit of stuff here. There, um, the microphone is here, so it might be the microphone preamp too. So, microphone preamp and then audio output. This is probably the audio output, and this is probably the microphone input. So, that's probably what that stuff is. And then this is the brains of the of the thing, and then a nice little display. So that's all that's going on there. And then, like I said, here's the uh, let me focus. Here's the uh, speaker, and uh, this part is plastic. Um, and then there's this little part, and this little part is metal. Uh, so, so this, so this is kind of one of what I wanted to look at today. Tear this down. So um, here's the little flex. Uh, here's the uh, volume squelch, and. Um, yeah, so this board comes out. I've already done all the dirty work here. There we go. So this is all cast cast metal. Okay, that piece piece there. All right. So this is the radio. Uh, this uh, at least all the RF sections and stuff. And um, my takeaway, <laughs> having done this, is do not try to fix old surface mount radios because <laughs> this stuff is just super tiny and just insane so i would just go insane trying to fix this radio um, modern radios are just is all down to just one chip so you don't have to worry about much but at this particular point in time you had to just pack uh, five pounds of whatever in a 10 pound sack or what 10 pounds in a five pound anyway whatever it is you know the <laughs> you know the line um so these two boards piggyback. Oh, there's a connector here. So these these boards piggyback, and yeah, they're both just chock full of stuff. Um, I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, but uh, yeah, this is just a nightmare to work on. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah, look at this thing. 
Holy crud. And here's the, I, uh, the IF filter, the probably 10.7 or 455. This is probably a 10.7. Um, wow. Teeny tiny little little uh, trim, trim pots. They are cute. They are very, very tiny. And then this is where the uh, rest is. I can kind of notice this is the final amplifier here. So this is really the fun stuff. Let's get even closer to this stuff then. Uh, I'll show some, show some angles here. Lots of stuff in these. All right, a little closer. Yeah, so I think this is the final amplifier. I think that's the final transistor there. And uh, this looks like it's the uh, low-pass filter filtering on the output. And the antenna would connect here. And this is kind of a three-dimensional thing, too. There looks like there's this giant heat sink in here, big slab of copper here that attaches to that, uh, goes underneath that transistor there. And then there's something under a can here. I'm not quite sure what's under there. And uh, Maybe a FET here for power on, power off. That's my guess. Let's look at this side. Wow. Yep, lots of stuff under here. Here's the other board. Four forty five. Is that the the last second conversion filter? Probably. I think this is the ten point seven. This is probably the four forty five. Instead of 455, it was 445. Interesting. Yeah. All right. I want to see if I can get underneath this can and see if I can't get this power amplifier off. I don't know quite how to do that yet. All right. Well, this is a nightmare to take apart, man. It had tons of solder on it. So this can, this is what was in the can. So tiny, 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 tiny little <laughs> little surface mount parts, some coils and stuff. So this is probably the, this is probably the VCO, my guess. VCO or part of the face lock loop circuit that the the VCO is being controlled by. So, yeah, it's it's just super tiny and it just, yeah, this is something you just don't work on. And it was soldered down right here, so there was stuff underneath it too. So this can was was like that. So this board was on top of that board and there's a bunch of stuff underneath it too. So yeah, there's just tears and tears and tears of boards in this thing. Um, yeah. All right. So that's what that thing is. Let me see if I can't get rid of the, uh, get into the uh, power amplifier, not get rid of, but get into. Looks like there's a little connector over here. Maybe I can just Maybe I can just remove that connector and the thing will come out. We'll see. All right. I did get it out. It's uh, on this funny little metal piece here and there's two connectors here and here. So this is kind of a board above the board and this is just the power amplifier. I'm not sure exactly what that chip is doing. Can I read a part number on that one? The uh, transistor is an MRF5007. Anyway, there you go. Lots of cute little parts on this board. It's always fun to tear things apart, see how other people designed it, and how people put uh, so many things in such a small, small space. So the Japanese were pretty good at doing that back in the day, probably still are.